Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing my top books of Q3. So that is from July, August, and September of 2019. I don't think I need to do any more of a, an introduction than that, so without further ado, let's get started. So in at number 10, we have Pulp Fiction by Quentin Tarantino. Now, obviously, if you've seen the movie, you pretty much know what you're going to expect here. What I thought was cool, this also included a few like behind-the-scenes photographs, and then screenplay bits for additional stuff that was either added in or cut out from the original screenplay so you could kind of compare the two and I thought that was really cool I mean I'm a fan of Pulp Fiction anyway and so I just really enjoyed reading this and absolutely whizzed through it and then watched the movie straight afterwards as well so that was quite a cool thing to do so yeah number 10 in at number 9 we have The Diabolical Club by Stephen Colgan so this is a murder mystery it's actually sort of the second one that loosely revolves around his uh, fictional detective Agnes Crabb so in this one Basically, there was a crime in the past not long after the Second World War, and Crabbe wrote about it in this unpublished manuscript. And then this manuscript sort of comes to light, and we sort of see what happens after that. You can read this as a standalone, or you can read the first book, A Murder to Die For, as well. I'm actually uh, one of the backers of this, because this is published through Unbound, which is like crowdsource publishing, basically. And so because of that, my uh, name is inside this as well. And yeah, I couldn't wait to get this, and when it arrived, I devoured it, and it was great. In at number eight, we have Small Steps by Louis Sakar. So this is kind of a sequel of sort to Holes, except it doesn't feature Stanley Yelnats, who is the main character of Holes. This is all about uh, Armpit, and basically Armpit gets involved in this ticket-touting scheme, and ends up accidentally meeting this sort of young pop starlet in the vein of... I don't know, like a 14-year-old Miley Cyrus kind of thing, you know? Back when she was Hannah Montana. And because he's black as well, like, he gets accused of all sorts of different stuff. And it kind of shows you a lot of the different prejudices. And sakar has got this really great way with endings. I actually enjoyed this more than Holes because I didn't too much like the dual timelines narrative of Holes. And that didn't really happen here. So, yeah, very much enjoyed. I did a full review of this, which I'll link to below. In at number seven, we have Cannery Row by John Steinbeck. So this was actually a buddy read with Charles Heathcote, although we both kind of just read it in our own time. And this kind of is a short novella almost, telling the story of these down and outs who decide to throw a party for, a, for Doc. And the first time they throw it, Doc doesn't actually arrive. And so he comes back to his own house where they threw this party and they've just trashed everything. And so they then throw another party to try and make up for it. Steinbeck's really good at writing about these kind of down and out characters. I think this is my second or third thing by him now. Actually, I've read of Mice and Men and some of his short stories. Uh, and then I read this. And yeah, it was excellent. I mean, that's why it's on this list. It was very good. And I can't wait to read more Steinbeck soon. In at number six, we have The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins, which I wasn't expecting I would ever say. I'd kind of discounted The Hunger Games books just because... You know, back in the day, like, Twilight was way after my time, I think. And, like, The Hunger Games was just about after my time. And uh, it was kind of looked down upon, I guess, you know. And then I watched the movies on Netflix. And I thought the movies were pretty good, so I thought I'd read the original trilogy. And so far as the start of them, this one did not disappoint. Again, I'll link below to a full review uh, down below. But basically... I think it did a really great job of creating this sort of dystopian society. I think um, the writing itself wasn't fantastic. I think anyone could have written it, but the imagination behind it and the plotting and this world building and whatnot, you know, second to none. So, yeah, definitely recommend checking it out, especially if you've, you know, been putting it off a little bit. In at number five, we have Sleeping Beauties by Stephen and Owen King. So, again, I will link below to a review of this. This is kind of like an interpretation of the, the Sleeping Beauty myth. And basically in this, all the women in the world, once they fall asleep, they get like enclosed in this cocoon. And if you try and get them out of the cocoon, they kind of go rabid and attack and kill people. So we then see what effect this has on society when all the women start to disappear. We get some really cool stuff because we follow um, like the sheriff of the town. And to make sure that she stays awake for as long as possible, she's raiding like the evidence locker from when they busted these drug dealers and stuff. And yeah, this went, because I read Insomnia and... Um, I was kind of hoping that would go more into like the effects of sleep deprivation and that kind of stuff and it didn't really whereas this really covered it so I thought that was super cool and again the world building of just this small town American stuff King is great at doing that and um, yeah this has made me want to read some of Owen King's stuff now as well and number four we have Stephen King again with the dark half so this on the front even says that it's his masterpiece this is about a writer called Thad Beaumont and I think this is probably his finest novel about a novelist it's one of those it's one of the rare few where it couldn't have possibly worked as a novel if you change the character's occupation. Like with The Shining, for example, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a writer for that story to work. 
Uh, the only other example I can think of this is Misery, where the entire plot just goes if you change the fact that the character's a writer. And for me, I think that's what he should do, because it just gets kind of annoying and repetitive to constantly read about writer characters. Um, I know they say you should write about what you know, but there, there is a limit. But yeah, this one was excellent. There were some great gore scenes in it as well. I remember this scene about someone stabbing themselves in the hand with a pen, for example. And again, full review of this linked down below. In at number three, we have Night by Eli Weisel. So this is non-fiction, kind of Holocaust survival memoir, essentially. It's one of those books that's just super important. I think it's actually taught in the curriculum in America. Not so much here in the UK, but after hearing people talk about it on BookTube, I just knew I had to read it. And I saw it in a charity shop, snapped it up, and yeah, it was, it was fascinating. I mean, it's hard to say you enjoy books like this, but I do really find it interesting to read about the Second World War and the Holocaust and things like that. I don't know, man. I'm just always in awe of the, the cruelty that humanity is capable of perpetrating upon itself. This is just, a, as I say, a very important book. I think everyone should read this, and it's pretty short as well, so what's not to like? Yeah, very well, very much deserving of its place on this list. And then these last two were difficult to choose between, but in the end, I went for The Long Earth by Terry Pratchett and Stephen Baxter. This is number two. Again, I will link below to a review of this, but rest assured, it is a monster of a review. I think it was like 40 minutes long. What I like about this is all the science. Basically, the core idea is that humanity's found a way to step from one world to another. So, uh, you know, you can step from our world to world number two, on world number three, world number four, etc. And you can go either west or east. They're kind of like arbitrary directions. But uh, there are no human beings on all these other ones. So it does kind of investigate the parallel, parallel worlds myth. Uh, you get like interesting things on how this affects society. So you get new pioneers, for example, who decide to go to world 100,000. Bearing in mind that like you can only step one world at a time and actually you've left nauseous as well. So going to world 100,000 is like an eight month journey. Also, you can't take iron between worlds. And so there's just all this different interesting stuff in this. It was so good. So good. This was like a five out of five when I read it and uh, definitely check this one out. The rest of the series kind of went downhill a little bit. It was still OK, but um, that first one, absolutely phenomenal. And so that means in at number one we have Stoner by John Williams and this was a buddy read with Mara from Books Like Woe. She kind of summarised it in her videos as saying it's like the perfect novel, which it is. It follows the, the uh, life of this guy called Stoner and he starts out, he's like, um, uh, he's like a farmer's son. So it seems as though originally his life is going to be to work on the farm. Then he goes off to university and studies, eventually becomes a lecturer. And uh, he's in this kind of loveless marriage. Him and his wife are basically at war with each other, but very subtly. They have a daughter there as well. And we get to see the impact the war has on his life. And uh, he then takes a mistress and all this kind of thing. He has all these um, kind of like disputes with other lecturers at the university, which were actually really fascinating to read. Like, again, they're super petty. And actually, this is what this captures really well, that humdrumness of life but in a way that made it just really readable as well. And I, I mean, I have this beautiful edition too. So yeah, really enjoyed it and would definitely recommend checking it out. So there we have it. Those are my top 10 books of the quarter. Uh, here down here is the number of books in total I read. So, you know, they, they had to be pretty good to get on this list. And again, I would recommend all of these ones, but in particular, the ones towards the top end. Uh, also, if you're interested in more, you know, check below for the, for the links to the various video reviews. And yeah, as always, let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. P.S. Thanks for watching. That's the bit that I missed.